What is up, MMA buds? Welcome to <laughs> the studios here in 541. I'm Dan from Oregon. And if you're new here, this is MMA for Brunch. We're here to go over all the latest and greatest MMA news from throughout the week. And we're going to start off with some Risen news here. Before that, though, everyone make sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notifications so you get alerted every time we go live. Bye. Um, and let's get to it, guys. I falsely reported just the other day that BJPenn.com broke the news of tension versus Floyd. That was incorrect. News was broke by Mike Loves Tacos X over at MMA Sucker, Mike Skype. This Risen Press Conference tonight is going to blow everyone's mind. I had to update that and let everyone know. On to other news, though. A lot of questions came out of that press conference. One of them, how much is Floyd getting paid for this? And via Karave fan over on Twitter, we got from Tokyo Sports, Mayweather targeting 10 billion yen, a bit less than 100 million, for the Risen 14 fight versus tension. Supposedly, Risen is paying 7 billion of that, with what Sakubara claims is left over from the Pride acquisition and the rest being the value of the pay-per-view sales, broadcast rights, and all of that. Grain of salt via this man. So, got a lot of skeptical people out there on Twitter, but that's not a bad thing. How did everyone respond to this news, though? Let's go check out what the, uh, the old girlfriend is thinking over here on Instagram. Go to the Notorious's Instagram. And sorry guys, this isn't big, but I'll read it all for you. Uh, is that a tracksuit or a sauna suit, Floyd? Haha, <laughs> what the fuck? Is that hot in Tokyo? What's the story here? That climate change is no joke. Fuck me, haha. <laughs> what in the fuck is going on here? Who's this little prick next to you? That's mad shit. Like something out of Rush Hour 5 or something. Chris Tucker and Jackie fucking Chan back in this bitch. Fucking brilliant. Mad. <laughs> Little bastard you are, Floyd. Fair fucks to you, mate. No lie. Fuck it. Goddamn if Connor isn't one of the most racist, piece of shit motherfuckers out there in the game. What kind of response? This is the real response from Connor McGregor. This is no joke. Uh, from there, though, let's go to Tension's Twitter over here. Tep in Tension. Give him a follow. Hello, Mr. McGregor. Taking a page out of Sage book. I see that. Okay. My name is Tension Nasakawa. I am not Jackie Chan. I promise to avenge your loss. So please watch my fight at the Notorious. <laughs> what do you guys think of this? Holy shit. First, he goes all sage and polite on his ass. Then he throws shade on him for losing to fucking Floyd even though tension's coming in here in like a 20 pound deficit when Connor came in with the size advantage and oh my god just all class over here from tension love it love it <laughs> what else and so guys I realized that we didn't give you a lot of backstory into this man here tension who he is what's his record and all of that nonsense well two years ago for uh 2016 he made his risen debut on the new year's card two years later he's fighting floyd mayweather in the main event in the biggest fight risen's had definitely biggest card they're gonna have since 2009 and I'll get to more of that later. Oh, guys, and stay tuned for the very end. We're going to go over the poll results on what New Year's card everyone's looking forward to. That's what I was going to say at the beginning. Um, okay, well, let's tell you more about Tension. Tension Nasakawa. And thank you, Danny SZE145 over on Twitter for this. Tension Nasakawa, amateur kickboxing record of 105 and 5 and 1. With 62 knockouts. That's impressive. Professional kickboxing record 27-0 with 20 knockouts. 
Holy shit. Professional MMA record, 4-0, two knockouts, one sub, one decision, only 20 years of age. Has recently beat, in a kickboxing bout, the great Gooch, Kyochi Horiguchi, the man who fought to a, damn, the last second in the fight with DJ. And so, holy shit, people are talking, I'm listening to Sirius XM Radio, the boxing channel. What a fucking joke that was. And they're calling this guy green. He's not experienced. They don't know shit about the guy. Well, now you know a little bit more about him. Dude's got what? Basically 150 fights under his belt. But he's just some green little amateur nobody. Nothing to pay attention to. Just Floyd out there being Floyd, trying to steal all the thunder. They went as far as to say oh, all this was was a, a way to steal thunder from the Tyson Fury and Wilder fight. I was like, that's a fucking stretch. This is an MMA fight over here. You guys are competing with MMA now? Okay, I see how it is. So surely that's, that's how a couple of fighters reacted. One of them that's involved in the fight and one sad poor old girlfriend that got dumped. Um, let's go on to some of the media reaction. Surely they ought to be stoked for something like this, man. We got, this is a different time zone. You can run two events in one day, get double the coverage. It's great for fans and media alike. You would think, right? Let's check it out. Megaton out there on Twitter. MMA fighting and the like are going to hop on that Risen train real fast. What do you guys think, man? There's gonna been a lot of hate in the past and a lot of excuses that I don't buy. And they just say, oh, there's no return on investment by giving coverage to Risen in one championship. Why do we need to talk about them? There's no one to talk about over there. Well, the last three weeks kind of blew their freaking mind, don't you think? <laughs> uh, oh, what else is going on here? Sorry, I'm getting distracted by the chat, guys. Sub is banned from top chat? I guess so. Um, anyhow, so back to the, the reactions. They, they Nothing but excuses. Oh, Japanese MMA is dead. Even though it fucking began there. And that's how Pride you know, started this whole MMA thing. That we all know and love. Okay. But now they've got Floyd. You know those motherfuckers at MMA fighting love their clicks, right? So surely... Surely they're going to hop on that Risen bag wagon real fast. Let's get some reaction. Uh, and one more. We are Risen Pod. Guys, give them a follow. For all the MMA reporters who refused to cover Risen previously, the previous show citing no return on investment, lack of interest from the West, and other bullshit reasons, where are you guys now? So let's go to the reactions from them. Surely they got to be excellent, right? Who is paying for Mayweather to fight in Risen? I ask this because it isn't Risen. I say that because it can't be, says Luke Thomas, MMA Fighting's number one steward of the uh, channel over there. So not only is Luke going to throw shade at one championship, how can they possibly afford to pay Eddie Alvarez good money? UFC's over here playing slave wages. No one can pay more than that. Nobody can pay more than that, guys. So the people that literally know nothing about it because they don't cover it, they never watch it, now they're all experts. Okay, let's go on to more experts. What else we got? Brendan Schaub. I hope everyone realizes the fight will be about as legit as Macho Man versus Ultimate Warrior in a WWE match. Hashtag scripted. Hashtag, you should retire because you're not very good. Salty Brennan Schaub. Man, guys, let me know if you see a trend here. The trend that I see is all the Conor McGregor dick riders who were very anti-Habib can't give Habib any praise after he smashed their fucking clickbait motherfucker. It's all about clicks to them. They're so salty. As soon as Habib wins, you can't talk about Floyd. Don't you dare mention Floyd's fucking name. 
Floyd in MMA? No. Floyd in boxing? No. We want, we want Habib here. As soon as Floyd gets mentioned in an MMA fight, the, the, the fucking narrative switches to, why isn't he fighting Habib? Literally yesterday on Luke's show, he said, why is he pin, Floyd going over to Japan where they said they're going to pay for him, and why isn't he fighting Habib? I thought we're bitching about the Floyd talk. What are you guys, are you going to make up your fucking minds? So all it is in my mind, dude, this is just clickbait, Conor McGregor dick writing 101. You got to fucking hate everything else out there. And so here's Floyd, not involved in a Conor fight. All of a sudden, Britain Schaub hates it. Schaub, what if this gets picked up by Showtime? And they need you on that Showtime special. You think they're going to want you on after you said shit like this? Salty as fuck, says Stewie. Yeah, I don't know why Brennan Schaub's... I mean, he's a Conor McGregor dick writer. Come on, guys. We You can obviously tell, tweet by tweet as we go along here, what the hell is happening. And guys, before the fight, Conor McGregor goes out and says he's going to make $50 million in the UFC over here for this one. That's awesome. He's changing the fucking game. These guys are getting the paydays that they have deserved, the only time I'll use deserved in MMA, uh, for a long time. He's talking about the pay. No one questions nothing. Eddie Alvarez goes over and gets that one championship money. Oh, where's the money come from? Oh, there's no way they can afford that. Risen gets Floyd. Oh, where's the money come from? Jesus. And it's just it's salty behavior from people that know nothing about what they're talking about. Look, look at the facts of what these people are giving you. They're nothing. There's no facts anywhere. Let's keep going with this reaction. Dave Doyle, back to MMA fighting we go. I thought they're going to hop on the Risen bandwagon. That's what we were thinking. Risen can't afford any A-list MMA talent, but they got the money to get Floyd Mayweather to fight? Okie dokie. Just so much salt over here. It's incredible. It's incredible. What else? Chuck Mendenhall. Chuck. You're the best writer out there. Surely you could talk some fucking sense into these guys. I've had the time to think about it. Here are all the things I love about Mayweather versus Tension. He lists nothing because, again, MMA fighting doesn't care about Japanese MMA. They aren't going to show love to Japanese MMA. They won't even... Admit their faults by never covering it. And when something finally happens, let's just shade it out. Let's shade it out as much as we can. So what was all of the things that were great about Mayweather versus Connor? Connor goes over there, represents MMA versus boxing, and quits. Looks like a fool. Gets finished by Floyd Mayweather. MMA loses. What was the thing that you loved about that, Chuck? <laughs> we watched Kembo Dada. We watched Bob Sapp fight. <laughs> yeah, these motherfuckers do too. But they're just, oh my gosh, it's crazy, guys. Let's check out some more. What else could there possibly be? No more shade could be thrown. What's more likely, Risen raise $120 million for a Floyd Mayweather fight or raise 5 or $6 million for some Floyd Mayweather promo? Just a gentle thought. Robin, what the fuck? Robin Black, I might work for one championship. Everyone, look out for what kind of uh, affiliation these people might have when they're mentioning comments like this. MMA fighting, you might as well be fucking UFC state-run television at this point in time you guys are crazy over there so of course i see the shade there but come on robin i guess that gets you invited to the luke thomas show so you know one good tweet can get you a long way with the ufc shows but guys let's hit you with some facts about this goddamn card they're gonna go full saitama super arena 
This is going to be one of the biggest events since 2009 in Japan. Tickets were released hours ago, if you were following Babalu Jack over here. Had a quick glance at the ticket on the site after today's announcement. Update on the tickets. Oh shit, the expensive ones are gone. Only cheap ones are left. And they're gone. Sold out. Sold out. They're going full venue like they've never done before. This shit gets sold out. And so they don't have the money to pay for it. There's no way that we got the money to pay for it, guys. But we got a sold out venue over here. Okay, okay. I just, I don't know. I had to show you guys what kind of ridiculous ass shit was going around on Twitter. <laughs> It's just crazy. It's crazy. I just, yeah, man, my, if their reaction was halfway sober and not dick writer-ish, then it would be great. So, guys, quit your, quit your clickbait dick writing shit. It's ruining the fucking sport. I think uh, MMA media changed MMA, to quote Habib. Let's move on, though. For everyone who can't get their hands on a risen ticket, guys, don't panic yet. They're going to release more. Maybe in a couple days, maybe in a week. More tickets will get released, but jump on that shit fast. Make sure you're following all these people that I've been showing you here. These are the people that you want to follow for the Japanese MMA scene. And, but if you couldn't get a ticket to this, luckily, a reminder to all from Michael's Tacos, tension will still rematch. Teaki Neto at Rise 129 in two weeks. It's going to be a banger. And needless to say, there's going to be some freaking eyeballs over here, man. What do you guys think? If you couldn't get your Risen ticket because that shit was sold out, Rise 129 coming up very soon. You can catch, in theory, tension in action. As long as that's still a go. On to more news, though. Michael Fidel over from MMA Today and other great outlets. Let's check and make sure. MMA Sucka and the Body Lock MMA. Um, is Sage Northcutt going to sign with one championship via Facebook at Shatri Sitchardong, the chairman of uh, one championship? And for our fans, I am happy to announce that Demetrius Johnson, Eddie Alvarez, Sage Northcutt, and a few other superstars will be in attendance to witness one Heart of a Lion on November 9th in Singapore. What was going to be two title fights that the ticker lets you know is now only one because uh, Angela Lee got injured. So the super fight between the ladies is off. But, ladies and gentlemen, still a great card that you should definitely be hanging out uh, watching. And looking forward to. So, what do we know? Sage Northcutt's been a free agent for a while. The exclusive matching right period that the UFC had, that's over. Now, Sage Northcutt is out on the free market. Now, Sage Northcutt is out there dating other promotions. Seeing what kind of... Uh, reaction he's got. Eddie Alvarez tells you this is the best time to be a fighter. Go out there and be a free agent. Sage Northcutt, he's listening. Your right favor might be his manager. I don't know who exactly is managing him. Dad, I got a show going on, man. <laughs> if he'd not. Um, okay. Anyways, Sage Northcutt out here. Go and get all the offers, guys. Get that money. Here's Sage Northcutt's Twitter. So no one wants to let you know until Sage comes to social media. But Michael Fidel on this story before anybody. Here he is, leaning back, getting ready to take in that card. Look at this first class seat. That he's got over here. Taking that long flight 
over probably Japan and Singapore. Who knows? But go out there and play the market. Play the market, man. Called you on Skype. Skype ain't on, brother. Sorry. Get in touch with me before the show next time. But on to more news. Guys, if you watch the MMA Hour, Luke Thomas had on one of the gentlemen from KSW. And Luke wants to go out there and ask for proof. Dana White will come out and tell him, USC is selling out shows. It's only half sold out. He doesn't give a fuck. He don't care at all. He'll just parrot whatever Dana White says. All the media, oh, sold out, sold out, sold out. 10,000 showed up. Well, Risen had 18,000. But KSW wants to tell them that they're, they're fucking popular, man. You go to Poland, they don't say we train UFC. They say we train KSW. Luke don't believe it. Show me the proof. Here you go. KSW 43 had more views on national TV than soccer football match between two of Poland's biggest teams. Impressive that MMA in any form performs better than one of the world's mainstream sports in a country where soccer is prevalent. And what you're going to read here via Martin is 1.3 million were watching KSW. 1.2 million were watching that soccer match. 1.3 million. Compare that to a UFC on Fox card. Compare that to an FS1 Fight Night UFC card or even a Bellator. There's your goddamn proof. And you're talking about a Polish population that is minuscule compared to the UFC, compared to the United States, America, Brazil, all of those places. So you wanted your goddamn proof that KSW is big. There you go. I knew they were raking in big ratings. If we could read Polish, we can make a little bit more sense of this, but we can't. So take that with what it is. But on to the MMA news. We did have an announcement via the state-run television has changed. MMA fighting is out. ESPN is in. Breck Akamoto is getting leaked. All of the scoops from ESPN. Welcome to the new age. Ben Askren versus Robbie Lawler targeted for UFC 233 on January 26th in Anaheim per Dana White. Contracts are not signed yet from what I'm told, but UFC is working on getting it finalized. Story up soon on ESPN. What do you guys think of this? One of the people that Ben Askren didn't call out, Robbie Lawler, is the man to get the fight. Ranked in the top five, I guess. Disappointing in that. Disappointed. Man, right? You're going to go with one of the fan favorites, Robbie Lawler. Coming off some losses, though, I think. Who did he beat? Beat Cerrone, but then lost to RDA. Anyhow, that's been Askren's first fight. I guess the fans know him. His name's been around for a long-ass time. But... Where's the Darren Till matchup? I guess Ben Askren is too big of a star to get put on an ESPN on Plus card that's going to London. Ben Askren is going straight to a pay-per-view. When's the last time Lawler fought a wrestler? Man, he got murked by Tyron Woodley. Woodley didn't even need to wrestle him. So, shit, that's a great question. The odds cannot be in Lawler's favor. Astron high up there, but I guess UFC, oh, we got to introduce this guy to the audience. There you go. What are you guys thinking of this matchup? Did you want Till? Did you want him versus a Diaz, bro? Fucking almost anything. All of his fights are against strikers like Condit, Brown, etc. Johnny Hendricks. Might have been the last wrestler that he fought. And that might have been post-USADA, Johnny. I can't remember the timeline exactly. But breaking story over here. Just a week ago, we couldn't even acknowledge that Ben Askren was in the UFC. <laughs> now we got a fight. It's in January, only a couple months away. How about that? 
So what kind of fights are already made for all these cards that we don't know about? What's headed to Phoenix? What's headed to freaking, what was the first card? Adelaide and everything. I don't know. We'll find out soon though. Confirming a previous report, and this is Ryan Thompson, mate, from underscore Safaroff. Alexander Shemenko states his fight with Scott Ashcrum is officially set for December 15th at RCC5, which we're definitely a fan of, airs live on YouTube. Still unsure how it works in regards to the exclusivity, exclusivity of Ashcrum's KSW deal, if it in fact exclusive. Okay, so that last sentence we don't need to pay attention to. We should just ask the KSW people. If he had an exclusive contract, not speculate. We shouldn't speculate stupid bullshit. Okay, check that out though. Shomenko loses over in Russia, gets a fight in Bellator, loses against Takov again. Oh, Bruno Silva was the man he lost again over in M1. So from M1, he's gone to Bellator, he's gone off to RCC. Shemenko was not happy to be in that contract. I wonder what kind of crazy ass money is getting thrown around. If you guys didn't need any more reason to think that you need to go be a free agent, think of Vitaly Menikov, the old Bellator heavyweight champion who ran over to Russia to get the proper paydays. Think of Alexander Shemenko trying to fight out his Bellator contract as soon as he can to get proper paydays. What up, Drunk Savage? And just all this shit, man. Become a free agent and see if you can make some more money. Go test it. Go try. The champ is here. Ollie Shafir presenting Joe Rogan with that belt. And he won. Sorry. I just want to say for the record, I was most impressed. The winner of Sober October. You have been exercising as long as I. I probably would have died trying to defeat you. Let's watch this again. Oh shit, no, go back. Belt, sign, you are the champion of Sober October. Thank you, Ari. I just want to say, for the record, I was most impressed by you, and that if you had been exercising as long as I, I probably would have died trying to defeat you. <laughs> I would have died trying to defeat you. They had some Sober October, and this was, this was a crazy episode. You want to see Joe and a bunch of comedians high and drunk and shit, go watch that one. They were having a good old fucking time. Um, Kinshiro. Russian MMA is worse than cancer. 1% uncurable. Once you start watching it, you can't stop. How about that? Kinshiro. Video games are worse than cancer. 1% uncurable. <laughs> But guys, Sober October, let me know if you caught any of this crazy shit. Joe Rogan's got a belt. Ugh. Hey, if Connor wants to get another belt in MMA, maybe he should go on the Joe Rogan's MMA show and Joe might give him a belt. <laughs> but guys, we ran a poll just the other day. Most intriguing New Year's Eve card. What say you guys? 48% or 48 votes came in. Thank you to every single one of you. 33% said Tension versus Floyd over at Risen. 4% said PFL Playoffs. And even though it's not New Year's, it's New Year's weekend. 63% said UFC 232, Jones versus Gus. Bunch of people excited for that Jones versus Gus card coming up. It's been a while since we've seen Mr. Dick Hill in the octagon. Connor ain't going sober for nothing. Says Drunk Savage. Oh, I didn't mean in terms of getting sober. I just meant in terms of ab ever getting his hands on another belt again. Go check his record since he's left 145, if you guys doubt me. But on that note, I got a clip here for you, ladies and gentlemen. We're giving Floyd a lot of airtime over here for this shit. And we all need to remind ourselves just how much of a piece of shit this guy actually is. Just a guy who's probably got, you know, licensed hands in a few states 
is out there beating women in front of kids and shit. So just in case anyone's forgot or you've tuned in here getting excited for Japanese MMA and Floyd because you love Connor and all that shit. Floyd is still a woman beating piece of shit. All right. You guys need to always keep that in mind. Always keep that in the back of your head when paying attention to shit like this. But guys, that's all I've got for you today. If you like this or you want to get be a part of the next poll that's going to happen, I'm sure I'll have a poll before the next show on Thursday, 12 Eastern time, noon. Come hang out for lunch or 9 a.m. Pacific. Then definitely follow me on Twitter at Dan from OR. Make sure you're following the new live broadcasting channel at World MMA Buds with a Z. And follow at MMA Buds on Instagram, Twitter, all that good shit. And definitely be a part of the conversation during the next show. Everyone can always jump in the chat and be a part of this. Uh, great show we got over here. <laughs> what a what a fucking sign out, right, guys? That chick has no chin. <laughs> oh my gosh. On that note, the chick's got no chin. Back to you, sickos. Right here. Peace. <laughs>